A Story of Survival. Chapter 1. It Begins. Part 1 of 3. Written by Casey Whelan. What's up, universe, and welcome back to the web's first must-see comic and nerd culture show. Welcome to Comic Universe, guys. I'm your host, as always, C-Dubs. And guys, today I have something special to share with you guys. This is just a little something that I personally am absolutely in love with. I'm a huge podcast and audio drama fan. I constantly, um, my job consists of me driving almost all day long. And sometimes the radio just doesn't do it for me and... You know, as much as I love music, uh, you know, sometimes you need something different. And usually that's when I throw on a podcast or especially an audio drama. And with it being the month of October, and of course all the ghouls and ghosts like to play around this time, I wanted to share with you guys one of my absolute favorite audio dramas. As you guys saw from the intro, it's called We're Alive, A Story of Survival. Now, in this day and age, I know that you're either a huge zombie fan or you're burnt out and I totally get it especially with the ups and downs of the long highway which is known as the walking dead I totally get it you know and but with the resurgence of you know the Resident Evil franchise with the remake to part two about to come out at the beginning of the year um, I feel that there are still a lot of people out there that still love zombies as much as I do and especially if you're gonna give me a zombie story that has some twists and turns and some unique flavors to it, if you will. And this is just that. Now, this is an audio drama, once again, that follows a large group of survivors through downtown Los Angeles, essentially. Now, they do move locations as, it, as the uh, audio drama expands and, and moves forward into different seasons. Um, <clears throat> it was originally released in podcast form, okay... Um, and now it is uh, kind of grown on to DVD sets that you can listen to. Uh, in addition to that, it's like everywhere you can find podcasts. It's even on YouTube. You can find it there as well. And guys, they have even spanned and, and expanded into four seasons, which spanned about, uh, I think it was 143 episodes long, each episode running about 20 to 30 minutes. And they've even sp have three spinoffs known as We're Alive, um, Lockdown, We're Alive Gold Rush, and We're Alive uh, Frontier. Uh, Frontier, I do believe, has two seasons, or the second season, I think, starts on the 16th. Um, but what's really cool about the original story of survival is that it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So if, if you're a binger, if you're someone who just likes to listen through and chuck on through and not have to wait weeks or months for an audio drama or a podcast to release another episode... It has its entire story ready for you now. And you could find it at We're Alive, um, A Tale of Survival. Uh, you could watch, find it at zombiepodcast.com. I myself follow them on Stitcher. Uh, you can find them on Beadpon, YouTube, uh, again, iTunes, and of course, like I said, Stitcher. Now, what makes this story so much different, in my opinion, is that we don't get a lot to what these zombies are, what caused them, until later on into the seasons. And they start themselves to kind of evolve. And we have different types of zombies, kind of like um, Left for Dead has all these tons of different zombies. We kind of get that flavor here in this audio drama. We have um, these really big, I would call them like juggernaut types. We have these um, long armed ones that are able to kind of swing through trees and climb really fast. We got long leg ones that could jump really high. Um, and obviously, all this is due to your own imagination. So, you know, sometimes when you're creating something in your head, it looks so much better than it ever could on, let's say, TV or on the pages. And this is an audio drama that really helps you find that. It really helps you connect to that that you know those creatures if you will it allows you to kind of piece the puzzles from their description um, to what they really are and they even follow somewhat of a, a hierarchy if you will almost like ants um, where there is a um, you know one person or one creature in charge 
and the rest of them seem to kind of follow and do as they will. Uh, these zombies also collect their dead, uh, which is kind of unique in the zombie tale. So, and some of them, depending on how smart you were in life, uh, those zombies are smarter. So if you were a doctor, a scientist, uh, an engineer, things like that, you tend to be a little more smarter as your, you know, dead counterpart. So these are all different things that you don't really get from your typical, you know, Walking Dead or zombie story. And I'm not knocking Walking, Walking Dead. I'm still a fan. I'm not as big as a fan as I once used to be. I'm a few, even a couple of seasons behind myself. Um, so again, please don't take that as I'm knocking them. Now, this there's an ensemble cast that kind of interchanges from episode to episode. Um, but when we first start, we really have a good core cast. Um, I don't know if you guys will know any of these names, but they're pretty big in the podcast world. If you will, we have Jim Gleason as the lead character, Michael. He is a um, U.S. Army sergeant, and uh, he's kind of been, uh, he's just kind of like, he's going to school now, he's back from Iraq, and um, he's just a part-timer, essentially. Um, and then we have Shane Stalk, who is Angel, and Nate G's, who is Saul. They um, are all military guys. Um, Angel is actually the head, he is the senior officer, if you will, but he himself has no actual, as much field experience as um, Michael. So Michael tends to take the leadership role, and it's really cool dynamic between the three of these guys, because Saul has Michael's back no matter what, he's been to war with him, he trusts him with his life, and, and all those type of things. And Saul is kind of sometimes like, you know, maybe I, he tries to pull rank and things like that in this situation. So you get this really cool dynamic between the three of these guys. And you, again, you got Michael, who is the little, is grizzled. We have Angel, who is, you know, top of the class and everything, but just not enough experience. And then Saul, who is this, uh, this I don't want to call him a kid, but he, uh, he is the younger of the three. And, you know, he was a, a relatively good boy, got into a little bit of trouble, found his way into the army, and is kind of suited up. You know, when he's ready to go, he's eager, he's brash, um, and he's kind of a pseudo-tough guy as well. And then you have um, Alisa Elliott, who plays the role of Pegs. Pegs is this really shy, she's a florist, she's afraid of guns, she doesn't want to hurt anyone, doesn't want to kill anyone, and she gets really annoying really fast, but she does grow, and she may have the most growth out of every character in this podcast, if you will, or audio drama. Uh, we have Claire Dalton, who plays Riley, who's one of my absolute favorites. She is a, uh, a French chef, but she's also a, a pro uh, award-winning archer, uh, so she ends up trading in the guns for the bows, and it's absolutely awesome. Rambo style, if you will. And then my absolute favorite character, Scott Marvin, who plays the role of Bart. Bart is this grizzled, old, um, retired military vet. He actually was in the Marines, and you know now he's kind of has to work alongside these army guys. And you know how Marines and army guys sometimes are around each other. They kind of butt heads. And again, you know, Bart, uh, Bert, he has the most, most experience, so... You know, there's times where him and Michael even butt heads as to who's going to be the leader, and even Angel and him at times. Um, but Bart is like a crack shot, like he owns a gun shop. You, he could hit you like, you know, a, a mile away with a freaking hand cannon, and it's just absolutely awesome. He, you know, he battles some alcoholism. His, uh, he's a widow, uh, so he, he names his guns after his wife, if you will. Uh, so he kind of cherishes them, and he's just an absolute badass mofo. And what else is really cool about this, way before The Walking Dead ever did this, and way before the TV show ever did this in The Walking Dead and the comic book, we got this showing us criminals, as they call them maulers, because um, as the jailhouse, basically the inmates kind of get out, they end up putting up shack into uh, this huge like strip mall, if you will, and fortifying that. So they're referred to as maulers throughout the show, and I just always thought that was kind of cool. But we get this one really tough chick, and she's, uh, they call her Scratch because she's got a huge scar across her face, really on the nose, I know. Um, but she is just every much a demon witch bitch, if you will, um, to these guys, like no holds bar. And then when her brother dies, of course she blames them. And she So not only do you have these unique, intelligent, evolving zombies that come and that are trying to you know cleanse the world you will of human life 
And you also have these maulers who are continuously trying to kill them. Um, and the main group that we follow kind of sets, fortifies themselves within this huge tower. Um, and by tower, I mean apartment building, if you will, in the middle of downtown LA. So, you know, one of the busiest cities in the world, surrounded by all these zombies, and it just it, it evolves as the show goes on and it's just really really good and they do the drama really well and the you really start to identify with these characters and things like that and as you can see through the art that has been kind of scrolling along the page they have a huge fan base that that really really likes them um, and really follows them and everything that they do and they've kind of done some of this artwork um, for the cast, if you will, and I just really dig it, and I really got into it, and I just thought that maybe some of you guys out there in the universe, especially since we're in the month of October, would like to give this a chance, and if you've already seen it, let us know. I would, I'm would i dying to you know actually talk to somebody about it that's actually listened to it, um, because again, it's so much more than just a tale of zombies again. It's just, you know, trying to figure out, and you know, another thing that's really cool about this is that you get these bunch of just normal people thrown into this situation trying to become that are being led by military so they're learning military tactics and things like that they're all given these jobs for survival of the group that they have no idea like water uh, preservation you know of course pegs who's the florist she's in charge of growing the food and it just expands so much and we meet so many new characters that come in and out uh, we get this one character named skittles who's like this he's seen some he has seen some shit basically so his mind is kind of not all there. He saw all of his friends get disemboweled. Um, and he just kind of pops in and pops out running around. And he's one of those guys that's just like, you're like, oh, as soon as he's out at the picture, he's like, oh, that guy's going to die. Like, there's no way this guy could survive something like this. And then he'll pop up, you know, five episodes later, 12 episodes later, the following season. You're like, this guy's still alive? How the hell did he do that? And he's just, he's a lot smarter than you think, even though he's, you know, schizophrenic at this point. Um, so you just get all kinds of different types of characters involved in all of this. Um, and we get to learn some of their backstories, not to the extent like you would with Lost, you know, going into their, you know, who they were prior to all of this. But you do get some of that insight from some of them. Uh, uh, Datu, who is the building's maintenance man, we find out, you know, that his wife kind of up and left him with his children back in the Philippines. Uh, so he had to, you know, do something better for his kids. So he moves to this country in order to get a job, save up some money to bring his family, his mom, his dad, and his two kids over here and put them through school and things like that. And while he's in the middle of that, the whole zombie apocalypse comes and happens. You know, so you get so much insight into who these guys really are as people. And because it, you know, it does expand so long. Um, for four seasons, you really get to know these guys. And I feel like I'm a broken record, guys, at this point, but I promise you, if you give this one a chance, I think you'll really dig it, especially if audio dramas are your thing. Check it out. I'm going to leave all the links in the description to where you can find all their media and follow them. Um, I, per I would suggest on Stitcher because Stitcher is a really cool platform. Uh, you don't have to. I have the premium version because I like some of the shows that are you do have to pay for, like Marvel's Logan or Mar Marvel's Wolverine. Uh, they do have an audio drama for him on there as well, which uh, we did cover the first episode um, here on our podcast. Uh, you know, reviews, if you will. And guys, this go check this out. Let me know what you guys think. If you've already listened to it, you know, uh, and if you like it or not, let me know in the comments below, guys. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on this video. Click that bell to be part of our notification squad. And guys, I'm C-Dubs, and I'll see you in the universe. Peace.